much of them. No. Hey, good morning. Just the fact that you're here for it. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. I invite you to stand as we sing this morning. I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance by heavy stone, Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name for.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to St. John Lutheran Church on this Resurrection Sunday. It's good to be with you as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. One announcement before we begin worship, we are putting together a new church directory, so we encourage you to sign up. Sign-ups are on the welcome desk in the commons. Uh, with that, as we, before we sing our next song, I invite everyone to share the peace with one another on this Resurrection Sunday. Peace. grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. For I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. God who died came back to life and everything has changed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Oh, death, where is your sting?
me in to heaven's sweet embrace. I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. And through tears of joy, I lift my voice in everlasting praise. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. As we have gathered together in this place again on this Easter Sunday, I invite you to hear a word from 1 John, where John writes, This is the message we have heard from Jesus and announced to you, that God is light. In him there is not darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with God and keep walking in darkness, we are lying and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of his son, Jesus, purifies us from all sin. It's true that we are called by our Lord to follow him in the light. It's also true that each of us has not always done so. We have fallen short. We have missed the mark. We have sinned. But John continues, If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So even in the midst of our sin, we can and do have hope. So let us confess together with these words of the psalmist. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Our almighty and merciful God has heard our confession and our cry to be near us. Even in the midst of our darkness, even in the midst of our sin, he has heard and he has answered. God gave his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you of all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And on that day you call me in to heaven's sweet embrace, I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. And through tears of joy, I lift my voice in everlasting praise. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Some you 
Our Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another, my heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal, mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did, he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, 
Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your, fa your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. I, I feel like I know that. I've got that. And that's a cool thing uh, as we come together this morning and rejoice that because Christ is risen, everything has changed, everything is transformed. That's the title of the sermon, Total Transformation. And Pastor Luke and I have been preaching on the epistle lessons during this Lenten uh, season. Well, it's Easter now, Holy Week, and now this Easter season. We're not going to preach on the epistle lessons exclusively going forward, are we? have a little meeting right now. Yeah, so uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57, is, it is the great resurrection uh, chapter uh, of, of the epistle, really in the Bible. So I have this, this has come up in, in different ways, and it's a, it's a question, and there's an answer to this, but Sam Gamgee, uh, the faithful hobbit, the humble hobbit and friend, uh, he asked Gandalf the wizard toward the end of the Lord of the Rings, uh, book six, uh, he, he asks him, um, is everything sad going to come untrue? And, and this, it struck me when I was thinking about this the other day, I mean, I've, uh, I've, I've learned that, that I have other emotions that I can access rather than just anger and irritation. I'm pretty good at those. Um, every once in a while, I could be excited about things um, that are probably pretty superficial. But I've also learned that, that there are things that are just sad. And uh, maybe I don't even know always how to give voice to them, just, well, I'm feeling kind of sad. And so this question is, is everything sad going to come untrue? And the answer that I think that I'm going to import here, the answer into the church, and I'm confident Gandalf may have said it this way, the answer is, amen, it is. Yes, everything sad is going to come untrue someday. Now, all the promises of God, they find their yes, their amen in Jesus, and that's why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Uh, yes, all the sad things are going to come untrue. Untrue. Everything sad is going to come untrue. Amen because of Jesus. Can I get an amen? This is, I'm just, uh, this is like a true Lutheran church here, right? Just the tepid amen. Yeah, amen. That's right. Uh, amen. And you know, and, and the thing is, and we've been saying it today, that that amen is fouled up. You know how I know all the sad things are going to come untrue? Because, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yeah, see, that is, uh, that is the truth. That's what we proclaim, that he is the way and the truth and the life, that he is the light of the world that the darkness will never overcome. And, and yet there, there are things that are sad, and, and there is the valley of the shadow of death, and it is not a pleasant place. But we know that we don't, don't go alone because we have Jesus who goes with us. And, and during this Holy Week uh, and, and here into Easter Sunday, uh, it was Monday, Thursday, that we said that, that Jesus gathers his disciples together, that he is the once and for all sacrifice. And the one hymn that uh, references this, that, that we sing of his bleeding love for us. And then we gathered in this place on Friday, on Good Friday, and Pastor Luke preached about Jesus, who is the man of sorrows. Might even be a man of constant sorrows. Uh, he is the man of sorrow who sympathizes with you and me. He has been there. He has the same feeling. He knows what it means to be sad, to be brokenhearted, to be angry, to be irritated, to be elated. He knows. He sympathizes. He is with us. And he goes and he hangs at the cross. And all the sins of the world that ever were, are, or will be are plunged into him. And it goes dark. And there is an earthquake. And he is laid in a tomb. And it would seem that the word of God, the voice of God is silenced, but it's not because on the third day he is risen and we rejoice in that. 
But, but in 1 Corinthians 15, 26, um, St. Paul says that the last enemy to be defeated is death. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. And so we always cling to Jesus. But I think it's important that we're realistic and honest about that to say that, um, and, and the theologian N.T. Wright says it this way, he says that to say that death is anything other than an enemy is to deny the goodness and the beauty and the power of God's good creation. He created everything. He said it was good. He said it was very good. And to call death anything other than an enemy, and we're tempted, well, it's just, you know, it's just, uh, it's kind of a friend or it's sweet. No, death, death stinks. Death sucks. But Jesus is the one who has come to ultimately destroy death. And the point of his resurrection, his, his crucifixion and his resurrection, is the defeat, is the undoing of death. And so it's in that spirit, as St. Paul then moves toward the end of 1 Corinthians 15, he says, he says, flesh and blood in 1550 cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He says, the perishable, the things that are decaying, cannot inherit the imperishable. And then he says, well, so let me tell you a little bit more. And he says it this way. He says, behold. Or he says, look. Or he says, in the NIV, I think it says, listen. And, and maybe it is, it is listen. He says, listen to someone who is hurting. He said, just calm down. Listen. Come here. Listen to me. Or, or maybe it is someone who is just inconsolable and not paying attention to say, listen, listen to me, just a minute, listen. Or maybe it's just the Ross Perot, now listen. I know that's dated. I did go to a Ross Perot rally uh, at Purdue University campus in the fall of 1996. Uh, now listen, though, listen. Is that too much information, Pastor Luke? Okay. That's on the quiz. People get extra points. Uh, now listen, though, he says. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something, it's a mystery, and so it takes faith, and it takes hope, it is something that is going to blow your mind, it is beyond what you can understand, but it is true. I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, and what's he talking about sleep? Well, sleep for the Christian, well, well, Christian talks about death as sleep, because all of us, from what I can tell today, most of us, you are not asleep, you woke up today, and so you wake up every day, you're used to that, um, and so for the Christian, death is like sleep because you wake up again in the resurrection. The Corinthian Christians, they were ready here and now, like Jesus is going to come back, and it will be any minute, and it really literally could be any minute, and that would be good. It would be awesome. It would be the end of the world, and it would be fantastic, but he says, look, we will not all sleep because Jesus could return before you or I die, and that's all right, but here's what's not negotiable, we will all be changed completely. Total transformation. And this total transformation is necessary because the perishable cannot inherit the imperishable. Because the mortal cannot inherit immortality. So then he says, this is how long it's going to take. It's going to be in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, in a flash. And that last trumpet is the trumpet of victory. I think the hymn for all the saints talks about uh, the distant triumph sound, that we'll hear it. And the king of glory will come. And, and that uh, Ambrosiaster, who is an a early Christian, he says it this way, that it is the sound of triumph. It is the sound of victory when the battle is over. The song we're going to sing at the end of the service, it says, Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Aren't we going to sing that, Thomas? Okay, yeah, we're going to sing that in a little bit. Because the hope, the focus is always on Jesus. And that trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. Those who uh, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return, whose bodies are um, laid in the ground but their souls are with Jesus, no better place to be. They will be raised imperishable. Because this is the reversal of decay. This is the reverse of the curse, and we shall be changed. Paul gets more specific. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. 
immortality. It means incapable of dying. That Jesus is the first fruits. He is the second Adam. And so from the first Adam, we have all inherited sin. It's from the second Adam, the faithful one, that we inherit life and immortality. He is risen never to die again. And what's true for him is true for those who are in him, who live under the reign of Jesus, the sons and daughters of the king. That's you and me. And then Paul says, and and there's an order to things, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And this is the part that gets me. This reading here, 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 57, probably in my almost 14 years as a pastor, uh, is maybe the most common epistle lesson at a funeral. And it's fitting we talk about that today uh, because every Lutheran funeral service is really an Easter service. And every Easter service is a funeral service. Well, kind of, kind of. Uh, kind of morbid, although I'm, I like to be morbid. Uh, in some sense, we could say we're pre-preaching your funeral sermon because Jesus is the hero. It will be about who you are. Well, we may not have to actually preach your sermon, your funeral, because Jesus may come back first. But it is all about Jesus. It, but, but the thing is, when I, when I read this text, and, and I was taught, and Pastor Luke were taught at the seminary, that, that when you're preaching, and especially at a funeral, you've got to be confident. Like this, this is about Jesus, and this... You need to bring that confidence, and I've found I have a harder, I'm confident, but I have a harder and harder time, especially reading these verses. I don't even think I need to read them. i got to memorize now. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory is another Easter lesson is from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to 9, where God talks about gathering his people together on his holy mountain, and on his mountain, the place where God dwells, God will lift up the veil that is covering over all people, that darkness in the valley of shadow of death, it is going to be lifted up, and there on God's holy mountain, there will be a feast, a feast of well, of, 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 great food, of aged wine, well-refined, of meat full, of marrow. And then it says, and on his holy mountain, God will swallow up death forever. The thing is, though, I know these verses, and I know this promise, but it takes faith and hope to believe it. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Because at about every funeral service, and even if it's not there, we know this, and if it was in here, it would be right here, is where the reminder is, the casket. He then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And then these questions, they're quotations from Hosea chapter 13. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? And you know where it is? It's right there. Because this one is dead. And this one could be your husband or your dad. Could be your wife. This one Lord, have mercy, and some of you have been there. It's your son, or your daughter, or your grandchild. And every time I come to these, this word that's supposed to be defiant and triumphant, I, I, I'm saying, well, I know where it is. It's right here, and it's through the tears that I can barely get it out. Where? Oh, death is your victory? Where, oh, death is your sting? It's right here. So this this word then, it says that that, that resurrection, I mean, the the fact that Christ is risen, that doesn't change. But resurrection is not immediate. It's not the immediate reality for those who are asleep in Jesus. They're safe and sound. There's no better place to be. But I know, and so do you, where the sting of death is. 
Now, Pastor Luke, though, has told me, he says, and I, and I like this. He says that the, we, this, this portion of the scripture here, death is swallowed, the whole thing, but uh, death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? That that's kind of like giving Satan the finger. That's what you said. And I'm showing you what finger? This finger, the index finger. You. Right? So the finger, because I say it, I mean, and you can take this on a lot of levels. Because you say, no, Christ, Jesus, the hope is not me. And I know that this body is perishing. This body is decaying. It is mortal. Yes, absolutely. But I know the one who is imperishable, who is immortal. And he holds on to me, Satan. And Jesus, I always point to Jesus. He is the one who by his death destroyed death. He is the one that is risen. I'm pointing to Jesus. He is risen. And you, Satan, you can take all your accusation. And so it's a pointer finger. Or maybe a different finger. But I didn't learn that finger at the seminary. Maybe you did, Pastor Luke. So there is this defiant tone. And yet, and yet, see, this is the thing. We live in this then. I mean, we, we, well, we're not at the then. We're in the now. But we look forward to the not yet. That there is a day that's coming when every tear will be wiped away. But until then, we weep with Easter in our tears. But the tears come because... Life can be really sad. But you have a Savior who knows sadness. A man of sorrow. But he also knows victory and love. And he is the spinning image of his Father who has come, not that we would be miserable and sad, but ultimately that we would have life and have it to the full. And so we can, even through the tears, and haltingly say, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? And then Paul says this. He says, well, the sting, the sting of death is sin. And here's why. It's, well, you only die because you're a sinner. The wages of sin is death. And that's, that's the sting. And, and then he says this. He says, well, the power of sin is the law. The law is a good thing. Martin Luther says the law of God is good and wise. The law of God uh, for Adam and Eve, just do what I tell you. It is going to be awesome for you. You can eat of anything here in the garden, any of these trees. Now, there are these two trees here. There's the tree of life. There's the tree of knowledge and good, of good and evil. Don't eat of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And then they say, well, actually, now that you told me I can't, I, that might be a thing I'd like to do. I get that. See, I would be fine. There are things that I could otherwise be indifferent about. But if you told me that I could never do it, I think I probably will. If you told me that I could never wear this alb, I'd probably wear it all the time. I might wear it, uh, might wear it to work out, might wear it to mow the yard. I might even sleep in it, just to prove the point that I could. But if you told me that I had to wear this every service, you can bet I'm probably not going to wear it ever again. St. Paul says it this way in Romans 7. He says, well, the good that I know that I'm supposed to do, I don't do. And the things that I'm not supposed to do, I am really attracted to doing them. And that's the thing about us. Like, sin is not rational, and we live in this tension. I mean, even now, relatively small things that you might otherwise be indifferent about, but suddenly, if someone else tells you you have to do it, like, I will never do that. And if they told you that you couldn't do it at all, you'd say, I'll do it all the time. And that is, Lord have mercy, we need salvation. Hosanna, that's what we cried out on Palm Sunday. Hosanna, Lord, save us now. And he has and he does. Alleluia, Christ is risen from the grave. And that's where St. Paul ends here. He says, but, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The author, uh, Anthony Esselin, he says that, and he's a Christian, he says that true Christians don't talk about religion as though it's just a, a system of, of belief or something like that. True Christians don't talk about religion broadly. We're very specific. We should be that we sing, that we talk about. Guess what we sing about and we talk about? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. 
Now, all the promises of God find their yes in Jesus. That we sing about Jesus, we sing about um, that, that he is, that he, we don't even just say, Aulia Christ rose from the dead, even though it's a historical reality. We say it, this kind of dramatically, strangely, he is risen. And he remains, he is in this risen state. And because of that, everything is changed. This is a defining moment for all mankind, for you and me, now and forever. Everything has changed. Total transformation. That he has won the victory. And that's, you, you see the uh, up here, the victorious lamb with the, the flag of victory. And here in this image, the, the lamb who is victorious, uh, there's Greek written on there, Nika, which means victory. That Jesus is the one who has broken the bonds of death. And because he is the first fruits, that all who are in Jesus will also ultimately be free from sin and death and the power of the devil. This total transformation is also admitting that this present flesh and blood will decay and die unless Jesus comes back first. But God intends and he will create a new world. A new world in which decay and death are not just accommodated or explained away. They're not bargained with or something to litigate. They're just over. They are defeated. The last enemy to be nullified and made into nothing, to be made untrue, is death. And that is our story, that's our song, that is what we sing of his bleeding love, his resurrected and reigning love for you and me. But also, so that is not just, well, hey, here's, I'm going to tell you about a religion, it's to tell you about Jesus who is crucified, Jesus who is risen, Jesus who has called you and me and written us into the story. We talked about this at the beginning of the school year, our theme verse is Colossians 1, or verses 15 to 20, and it's in all things. All things were created in Jesus and by Jesus and through Jesus. And, and he holds all things together. And so the goal, not just for our confirmands who are coming up in two weeks, uh, but for all of us who are baptized into Christ, is to tell the story of your baptism. And to tell the story of your baptism is to say that I'm connected to Jesus, that God has called me to be his, that I cannot save myself, to say that I am baptized into Christ's death. Yes, he died on the cross. And here in this image we see a lot of stuff happening, that, that death is defeated, that Satan, the serpent, is defeated. But Jesus, from his side, there is water, which washes clean and is the is spring of living water. There is the blood that comes and gives us life. And also we see uh, his body in, with, and under the bread. We see it all to tell the story of your baptism and to confess that you are connected to Jesus. Colossians 3, verse 3, essentially says, you are baptized. You have been raised with Christ, and your life is hidden with Christ and God. You're clothed in him. So the mortal puts on immortality. The perishable puts on the imperishable. And when that happens, the story that the scriptures have told in many and various ways will ultimately come true then. The story of creation that, that reaches its, its final goal, where the curse is undone. God's intended design. The story that it has enemies being defeated, and whether that is the, uh, Egypt or Assyria or Babylon or Rome, or whether that is ultimate enemies like sin and death and the power of the devil, we confess that Christ is the one who is victorious. And he is in the one who makes all the sad things come untrue. In John 6, Monday, Thursday, we sang about this, that Jesus is the bread of life. And he says, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. 
Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The God who died has come back to life. Now everything has changed. And all throughout eternity, our song will be the same. I'll see your scars, your open arms, the beauty of your face. And with Job, you'll know that your Redeemer lives. The tears of joy, I'll lift my voice in everlasting praise. Alleluia, Christ is risen from the grave. And I will rise among the saints. See, on that day when Christ returns, then death will be swallowed up in victory and all the sad things undone. And just as the image up here shows that Jesus is reaching down into the graves of Adam and Eve and pulling them out of their tombs, he is breaking the bonds of death. He is clothing these bodies that they had lived out the curse from dust you have come to dust you shall return, but this dust is raised and put back and body and soul united to never die again. The perishable puts on the imperishable. The mortal puts on immortality. They are clothed in Christ. And that is your story and mine. That one day, Jesus will reach down and pull us up out of our tombs to stand before him. Walkers cast aside. No need for no need for dialysis, no need for pacemakers, bodies to live forever, to be gathered to see Jesus but one another. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now our service continues as we stand together and pray. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. We ask that you be with our synod, be with our synodical president, our district president, and all of our pastors. Keep them faithful to deliver your people, to your people the gospel of your Son's death, burial, and resurrection. We pray for all church workers and all those who serve here at St. John Lutheran Church and School in Little Wings. And we especially lift up to you Matthew Hill as he deliberates a call. Oh Lord, have mercy on the sick and those in need. We especially pray for Brian who travels and Christine as she anticipates surgery this week. Be with them and all others whom we name in our hearts at this time. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Comfort those who mourn with the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from all faces. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. worship at this time and gathering our tithes and our offerings. We also welcome you to St. John on this Easter Sunday and ask you to fill out the attendance cards and place those cards in the offering plate. We gather our offerings at this time.
please stand and we confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Maybe see it.
worthy, worthy is the Lamb, the one who died to set us free. It's by His blood we've been redeemed. It's by His life that we now see. You set the table, you bring us in. Here in your presence we find life again. This is the feast of your victory, God. There's restoration in this bread, this God. This is the feast of your victory, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Holy, holy is the Lord. Christ alone, 
my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you both in body and soul today into life everlasting. Depart in his joy and peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me, I'm gonna sing. Oh, yeah. 